Butterfly gon' recap this and say God he caught a 30 on the dime road. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'ma tell you what happened. He got smoked. That was crazy out there. Thomas Peter, nobody that knows body. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the fire flies. When you start rapping like that, <laughs> nigga, do you want to know what would have happened if I shot you? Your mama would have seen you lying and saying that's not true. But it is the oh. foe, not from 63rd. So don't you ever try to diss me. But it still hit a crip with a Mac. I'm just keeping it 55th Street. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, can keep it 55th straight. This 55th straight. For what, bitch? Uh-uh. I see it. It ain't happening, though. We gonna just we gonna just get right to it, man. So, so, so. I don't want to intro. I just want to say first and foremost, salute to every single one of y'all. And uh, true foe. I see a lot of talk about true foe and his battle this weekend. His win versus Geechee Gotti. I've stated it on the live stream, but I think I think we need to we need to slow it down, you know, bring it back, and uh, and, and I want to break down every round that I've sketched about. Uh, salute to every single one of y'all once again. I watched Trufo versus Geechee Gotti again. Um, I loved the battle overall. Let's just do that. First and foremost, I love the battle overall. It could be one of those battles that when you watch it again. You know, and you really digest what went on. You could see someone like True Foe starting to, you know, make them moves. I'm gonna give first off. I'm gonna give a round of applause to him. What they not saying and what people is not respecting is the fact that the guy was a 91 to 9 percent chance. He had a 9 percent chance to win this battle. That might only include his homies, some people from the Midwest, and his direct circle. 91% chance against Geechee Gotti. We all know the things Geechee Gotti has accomplished, all of his wins, the bread. He's made a lot of money in battle rap, whether it be from battles, whether it be from uh, you know winning, whether it be from big stage cards. Like if you think of some of the names that Geechee Gotti has battled, he has been able to change his whole life. And I hope that he continues to do that, you know what I'm saying? Um, in this tournament right here, uh, I felt while, and this is just my personal opinion, I felt like, like while Geechee Gotti wanted the tournament, he probably just wanted it to win again, you know what I'm saying? The bread was, to me, the motivation. And I say that because, you know, he had a battle like not too long leading up to it. He had clean paper. And then he had Jazz the Rapper, and now he's coming into this joint. And he's probably gonna have some more battles too. And it's just like, it's, it's one of them things where you just feel like, was he really, really, was this the focus? Was it really the focus for him? And he did good. Like, there were some moments that he had in the battle that were some, some really epic punchlines. When he said that line about, uh, it isn't true, but it is true. You know what I'm saying? Like you get shot, your mama wondering if it isn't true, but it is true. I thought that that was fire. Uh, the Wi-Fi, you don't need Wi-Fi for a funeral service. Like Geechee Gotti was definitely in his Geechee Gotti bag. He had a rebuttal. The rebuttal really didn't land. Uh, and it was a dope rebuttal. Not as far as like, he, it, was, it was dope that he thought of it that quick, but it didn't really have as much of an impact. You know what I'm saying? True foe comes with the I hit a Crip with a Mac off of 55th Street. Like if you ever see Crip Mac and it's 55th Street, cause I'm from 55th Street. No, 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 that don't go down like that on 55th Street. Like every, like that was an epic moment, especially all the people that's in tune with the gangsters and in tune with the streets and know about Crip Mac. They know how important that 55th Street, that was probably one of the best lines of the whole battle. I'm gonna just be honest with you. And in True Foe's rounds, a lot of the time he was fighting for reaction. Like he was like having to really, really get busy in order to get those upper level reactions. And you got to give props and respect to that. His material was really good. I counted the slip up, choke, whatever y'all want to call it in the third round. It was literally nine and a half, ten seconds. And he didn't, he jumped right back in that pocket. Like niggas is acting like he, was, he, like he got to the point where he missed the ball. He picked it back up and he finished his round. And he was like, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like he really wanted to finish it. So I give him props for that too. It was a small, it was a slight slip, but you know, 
he he gets he gets credit for that battle. Um, I do have Gichi Gotti winning the third, but Truffaut to me second. He got clear. The first could be debate, but Truffaut's material, dog, like his material was really, 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 really good. Gichi Gotti ain't losing no sleep over not winning a hundred thousand dollar tournament. This nigga probably getting paid half of a hundred thousand just to step on stage. Like he's like, yo. Everybody else scared to do it? Fuck it, I'm going to do it. That's why he was the biggest name in it. You know what I'm saying? He looked, probably looked at it like, yo, it's another 100 bag? Of course I'm going to do it. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to drop these punchlines. I'm going to get gangster with him. I'm going to do what I do. It's in front of a crowd, and it's going to be a fan vote involved. Me showing up to the battle and spitting three rounds is going to get me two of the judge. That's, that's a lot of the thought process. For me, it's like, Gichi Gotti going to lose if he brings three rounds of material, has punches, and does the thing that he normally do, well, Truffaut is like, nigga, huh, why would you put that belt on the line, nigga? Because it's mine, like, nigga, because it's I. That, like, that shit is real. Like, to, to, to know a nigga's like, man, I'm not afraid of losing no belt. Like, I, I'm going to step out here and I'm going to get busy. And you can't deny that. I hear a lot of talk about his, oh, is Truffaut a star? And the reaction to people asking that question, is he a star yet? He's not all the way there, but a tournament like this can help develop a star. See, I seen Verb say it too. Shout out to A-Verb. He said, a lot of the niggas that was put on is not stars. It's still not stars. You know what I'm saying? They're not stars now. Not, not wasn't stars. They're not stars now. So you can't really use that as your reasoning when it comes to Truffaut. It's like, bro. A lot of the guys, they gave niggas, certain, certain niggas got three, four, five, eight, nine shots, and they still ain't had a breakout battle yet. So we not going to do the, it's true for a star. He scratched and clawed his way by beating Agishi Gotti in a judged battle. Like, if it goes to the fan vote, and this is what I'm saying. If it goes to a fan vote, Trufo shouldn't win. He came into the shit with 91 to 9% odds. Someone with 9% odds should not be in a position to win a battle that goes to a fan vote. If the other person is kicking ass, like it's not gonna work like that. But it's a changing of the it's a changing of the of the regime and what's going on. Like nobody's gonna be the favorite forever. Like it's never gonna work. In battle rap, nobody has ever or will ever be the favorite. Every single time. I just saw Lux battle Gichi Gotti and Gichi Gotti won. You know? I saw Charlie Clips. Charlie Clips at one point was hotter than everybody. If you was around 2014, 2015, 16, you know when Charlie Clips was on top of the world. When he battled Rock. When he battled uh, T-Rex and body bagged him. When he battled Loaded Lux. Like, Clips was up there. There was no... You could have, I would have never thought that Clips would have fell to as far as he fell. Clips has won eight battles in a row on the app. You know what I'm saying? Call it what you want. I, I, I don't control the app numbers. Clips has won eight battles in a row. That is a fucking run. And he still be battling against narratives. If Clips is going to bring it, does Clips still care about battle rap? And woo -dee -woo -dee -woo? Only because of the decisions that he made. When he was in that top position, when he started gambling a lot, freestyling, like Clips got ahead of, so far ahead of the field, he just felt like he could write his rhymes the day of or not write them at all and just show up and freestyle and win battles. And that started dropping him, dropping him, dropping him, dropping him. And he got to a low point and then he decided he had to turn it around. And now he's in a great space. He's winning battles. He's moving himself back into them legendary conversations. I mean, he never left because he's always going to be a legend. But you know what was some shit with it. Like, man, you know Charlie Clips, he's fucking around. So, um, when it comes to Gichi Gotti, it's like, this is my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? I rock with Gichi Gotti. I been fucking with Gichi Gotti. He's on my intro. And I feel like, uh, you know, and then him on the remix, I feel like Vada going to react to this. Like, he's one of them dudes that, you know, we always had a good relationship. You know what I'm saying? And I like what he does, but I call it like I call it so I can't spoil it. And I feel like, um, at this point, Gichi Gotti, you already cemented, like you there now. You're there, you're cemented. You're one of them names. Every opportunity might not be a good opportunity as far as like battle-wise, you know what I'm saying? Like he battled um, Clean Paper, I had Clean winning. He battled Jazz, debate however you want. Some had Geechee, some had him. It's debatable battle. And now True Foe, which is an L, that's like two L's in a debatable on a guy like Geechee's run or the streak he's in and the things that he's been able to do. That, that kind of don't happen. That patch of battles in like a month and some change doesn't really happen with him. So 
what I, I say all that to say this, it's like, uh, I think that he should not just slow down, like stop taking less, less, it should be more impactful at this point, like take the impactful shit, the big cards, the big names, but all of the little shit in between for a little while, just for a little period, he shouldn't be doing like, you know, like a fucking, maybe you'll skip out on a, on a, on a, on a fucking any day to die card or some shit like that. Obviously if Drake is involved, you're gonna take that, but if it's like a card that's just a name, some names, like even like a Philly card, like with Cash versus Free, if it ain't really a battle for you that you want, he could kind of like pass it on it to the next joint, you know what I'm saying? But that's just, it'll slow him down and then when he comes back, it get, people are more excited to see you. People probably aren't so much excited to see you if they know they're gonna see you every month. Now, does he battle too much? No, he does not battle too much, he battles enough. But you know what I'm saying, you wanna, you definitely wanna make an impact every time you step out. And impact, impact means a lot. Like there's a lot of guys who, they battle, some may battle more frequent than others, but they wait for like the right, I'm not saying, you know, Goods will wait a whole year to take a battle. Lux will wait some time. And then there's other MCs, you know what I'm saying, that'll, you know, move move accordingly to what they got going on. But back to Truefoe, man, that's where I want to really keep it at, man. I think it was phenomenal for him to come in there with a game plan, knowing he was an underdog, put his own belt on the line against Gishi Gotti, who is probably, one of the top five names right now in battle rap, probably the hottest on URL, honestly, because Geechee been doing this for a little minute. When you add all of that pressure and say, I'm putting it all on the line. If I leave here, I'm leaving with nothing. Mind you, Surf puts an extra 2,500 on top of the battle. True folk don't get paid $2,500 a battle. I'm sorry, I don't think at this point you know, knowing people in battle rap and knowing what people get paid, I don't think that Truefoe is getting paid $2,500 a battle. If he is, if he is, salute to him and I'm glad to see him. What I, I would like to see him, he just got paid $2,500 for a battle with this one right here. He probably made over three fold with this one right here. So that's his biggest look. But what I'm saying is, you got somebody that done made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds versus someone who's hungry and has never ate. He said it in the battle, you know? That type of paper, what? Man, listen, you got what you, I, that's what I expected. I expected him to be hungry. I expected him to leave it all on the line. Did I think he was gonna win? 91 and nine, no, I didn't think he was gonna win. But did I think he could or he could have some moments in there? When it comes to battles like that, if you take it the first round or one of the first two rounds, if you, the, the, if you could get that second, oh, you in there. Oh, you in there. Because you could win one of the first and third. If you can get the second with a crowd, oh, you in there. And he got in there. He got that second. I heard the second again. It wasn't even close, honestly. It really wasn't. Uh, like I said, when you have somebody backed in the corner with no odds, with all the odds against him, you know, he gonna show up and he gonna show out. Like, if you either gonna barbecue or mildew, there's a lot of people who have been in this position before when it comes to the beginning of their careers and you gotta have that defining moment which makes it like, okay, now you're gonna start seeing me more. Now I'm gonna start getting booked. I want, and that, and none, none niggas were screaming robbery. With this battle, you may have people that feel like a Gigi Gotti won and there's nothing wrong with feeling that way because he did, like, when it comes to the work that he does, that was a day of work. Like that was an honest day. I'm gonna come to work, I'm gonna do my eight hours, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my little half an hour lunch break, and I'm gonna do the job. That's what he did. Somebody like True Folk came to get a job. Y'all following me? He came to get hired. This is his interview. You know a lot of people never really even seen him like that. Like he been on smaller joints, Born Legacies, The First Ultimate Madness, but that wasn't, that's not the look. That's not the, when I say it's a good look, it's not the look like battling Geechee Guy and being able to break everybody's brackets. That's the look. Now you can start talking about, okay, what I want to do next, who I want to see. And don't let him win another battle or two. He's battling Sheed, who he beat already in the tournament last year. Now that could be motivation for the other one to beat you. If he gets past him, <laughs> he only got a battle or two left for 100 racks. What you think he's going to do then? You know, I don't I don't got true foe choking or slipping up in this next battle. I don't. I don't. I got him showing up and showing out again. You know? 
salute to Chicago, man. Like you, you got to give it up. Like even if you if you can't respect that, your whole perspective is whack. Like you got to respect the nigga that had nine percent odds to win something, and and defied the odds. Regardless of how you feel, the judges made their decision. You can't blame this on Calico. Calico had notes and quotes, and he was scrolling through the phone and had the bars and shit. He was like SP, like. <laughs> A lot of people don't understand or know how hard it is to catch them bars in real time and then have an analytical decision. SP is one of the GOATs. Like, he do that shit at a high level. Catch the bars, be able to understand what the person said, and then be able to spit it to him. Because Cal got tore down after the first joint. People were saying, I don't want nobody drunk judging my fucking battle. You ain't see what Ms. Hustle said. I don't want nobody drunk judging my shit. That mama is drunk, drunk, drunk. Like, they was going in. They was literally going in. But... He showed up the next day, didn't, didn't catch no hissy fit about it. He stood on the decision that he made. I decided this person won, they won three O's, and what, what you gonna do? But now, I'm not gonna just say, I chose this person because they're a better performer or because they had the same sneakers I had. And then they, you have reason, like after the first slip up, he came back, he had bars, he had rounds, he had a good way to judge a battle. Boom, he does it. He picks his. Other people pick theirs, it's 2-2, two, two. send it to the fans. This battle's so close, send it to the fans. The fans said nine, they, they flipped it. He won by almost 1,000 votes, he ain't win by 25 votes, is what I'm saying. He did not win by 115 votes, he won by over 1,000. That's a good, a good portion of the people that's watching. Picked true foe, you know? You can't really, like I said, when somebody comes from those kind of odds, when they're, not, when they're down, they're coming into this shit as an underdog. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not coming into this as no favorite. He's coming in this to show up, be a stepping stone, and go home. That's it. Like, you just here to get my feet wet so I can dive in the pool and, and, and smoke the rest. But he turned that. He turned that around. You gotta respect that. All right? And he did his thing. And I definitely was like, nah, you know, I got these thoughts. I could tweet them and tweets and tweets and tweets. It's cool. But when I make that blog and say, yo, like, after a second watch, I know why. And I, when I wrote, am I bugging? I feel like I got true fold. Like, man, people responded to that tweet and was like, no, nah, you're not bugging. I just said it because I asked them, am I bugging? Because I'm like, yo, heart, heart means a lot. Like, the heart, the dog, the saying shit, like, as long as I got a clock, I got a chance. Like, that shit was real shit. Like, a nigga telling you, like, y'all think he's a god. Like, he's, a, like, Gotti had a lot of true shit, you know, true and C and all this other, he had a lot of those. But, true foe had the balls that was crazy. He said, he said, uh, don't sleep, cause if you lack our days a cool nigga. Like, I ain't never even heard that before, ever. You know what I'm saying? If you lack our days, what? Like, that type of shit was the hunger. Like, I'm coming to take this. I'm not coming to, to have no debatable, like, I'm coming to take this. Then homie in the crowd says, 2-0, 2-0, he's screaming 2-0 Geechee. And then he comes with the, 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 I hit a crip with a Mac. I'm just keeping that 55 Street. Then he doubles back like, 2-0 what, motherfucker? 2-0 what? Like, come on, son. Y'all, I listen, where I'm from, I'm from the Bronx. This battle rap is just doing their thing. You know, you got the chesses of the world. You got the goods, you know what I'm saying? I love to see the home niggas. Do they think? You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna hold y'all, of course. You know what I'm saying? You would you love to see the home home side doing their thing. But when they ain't, I say it too. When they ain't, I'll be like, yo, you know, me and Chess, we had it out. We good. I don't got no issue with them now, you know, but we've we 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 haven't saw eye to eye based off battles and shit like that. But I ain't got no issue with them now. You know what I'm saying? He's a young nigga. Like, <laughs> no niggas your pop sage. I ain't got no issue with them niggas. Like he's a young nigga. But he he he's he's tightening it up now. He's definitely tightening, getting this shit right, and bringing it the way he's supposed to bring it. But uh, don't, 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 don't sleep on true foes. All I'm saying, you know what I mean. Even if he don't get the whole hundred, which I know he's gunning for, and I hope he gets a shot at it and does his motherfucking thing. That moment that he had, you can't take that away from him. You know what I'm saying. Even Gotti was showing love to him after the battle and all of that. And if he ain't fucked up about it, ask yourself, why are you? Other than that, I'm gone. Y'all stay up.